we trying to behave ourselves on the story? Well, y'all know what we thinking right now. <laughs> I'm ready for the night. I got a little uh, extra energy. I don't know what might come out of my mouth tonight. As your kids, tell them to sit their bad asses down so we're grown folks in here talking. <laughs> T-G-I-M. What's up, everybody? It's Friday. It's your girl, Claudia Jordan, and I am back. We are back with a brand new episode of TGIF. We are here to break down some of the biggest news, the biggest headlines in social media and all the land. So get ready for this hot tea. Get you something to drink. I clearly have already been drinking. I had a nice little brunch with my... No, not a brunch. A late lunch with my girls, and they forced me to have four glasses of wine. So here we are. So let me introduce the fellas. Please welcome... Brand strategist, Al Reynolds. What's up, Al? Hey, that's right. Me first. Funky second. Oh, wow. Look at that light skin privilege. Mm, mm, mm. What's going on, Claudia? Oh, my goodness. I am good. I am good. And please welcome, last but not least, um, um, gentleman of the nights who continues to unlock his better self. We're going to keep on we're gonna keep on speaking that to existence. Funky Dineva. What's up, Q? Al, we all know the headliner comes on last year. <laughs> <laughs> opening act. <laughs> you just a little opening act, honey. Now. <laughs> the headliner always comes on last. <laughs> Don't kill me. Do not kill me, brother. Do not. Do not. Do you say don't Kelly you? You know, Kelly, you know, playing second fiddle to Beyonce. Oh, um, I thought you would have gone with Michelle. But at least you know your place. <laughs> Stay in it. Know your place. Earn your spot. Oh, what are y'all drinking tonight? Are we, are we is it a drinking show or a dry show? It's gonna be dry for me. I'm um uh cranberry juice, cranberry grape. Are you okay? Unlocking my better self, baby. Mm. Mm. That's giving a urinary tract infection. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I gave me some cranberry juice. Some... <laughs> and some yogurt. Uh, Al, are you drinking? Uh, absolutely. I have to after the week I had. I don't know if any of the other soulmates had the week I had. I need a cocktail. I'm having a little wine tonight. You had a rough week, Al? Al, what's wrong? Talk to your soulmate. You know, I, you know, I still have to work a job, 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 so... Um, yeah, you can imagine those those challenges. No, nah, I, I don't know what that feels like. <laughs> it's been 25 years for me. How about you, Q? <laughs> nah, I, have, I retired at 27 and I'm 38. I live a life of leisure, so I don't Girl, know. Girl, Girl, I woke up at 11 o'clock tonight. I said, let's see what CNN talking about. Oh, let me go watch Steve Wilkos. Oh, what's okay. Jerry Springer talking about? Exactly. Okay, now we get it, Al. Then you continue to work hard. Hey, uh, to the soulmates, make sure you put your questions in the chat because at the end, it's Friday, y'all. So Friday, we answer all your deepest, darkest questions like we always do, always so forthcoming. So please go ahead and get your questions in early so we can ask the questions. All right, y'all. Well, yeah, hold on, one, one question before we get started. Al, how many degrees is it in D.C.? Because you got on the <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's like, let me see. Last night it got so cold, it, it got down to the 60s last night. Let's see what it is now. You know, Congressional Black Caucus is here. Uh, we didn't ask all that, the degrees. The I'm degrees. looking to relax. I think it's like, you know, let me see. Here we go. 58. It's 58 here. Oh, because you just know you be a little un unnecessary and extra at times. I just want to make sure that the weather warranted you looking like a busted condom right now. <laughs> <laughs> Not a busted condom. <laughs> you know what? The, ha the haters will hate. The haters will hate. <laughs> All right. We want your questions, so make them good, because the good questions will get asked. So don't be get mad if your question don't get asked. That means it wasn't good. Okay, y'all, let's get on to the show. Megan Thee Stallion is slamming people who only share negative news about her. Megan tweeted, I feel like a lot of these blogs don't post me until it's something they know a majority of their audience can dogpile on me for or associate with some kind of negative narrative, because why is the way I start my performance to body damn it every show news now? She continued, y'all say ignore it, but when you constantly see people coming for you, your character, it gets frustrating no matter who you are. Um, Lonnie Love responded to Megan's tweets and offered some advice. Lonnie wrote, I know, but it comes with the business. Lean into prayer and meditation, block and bless. Keep good folks around you and stay focused on your goals. Good will always outshine evil, even if it seems it's not. You got this, Houston. Uh, how do y'all feel about Lonnie Love's advice? And do you have a hard time ignoring social media trolls? Let's start with Al, because Al, you're the newest to this. And you Ooh, know, yeah. And well, you know, I'm not I'm not new to being trolled now. You know, my first 
what, 15 years in this industry after my divorce was being trolled. Like 90% of the comments that I used to read about myself all the time were negative. Like there was nothing positive. I was a gigolo. I was uh, 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 taking advantage of this person. It was all the bad things, never anything positive. So that I can relate to Megan about because those things hurt when you feel like you show up to the world differently and you're not that person. However, that advice that Lonnie Love gave, baby, that, that was some good advice. That was some good old what I call industry goss gospel right there. And who would know it better, right? Because Lonnie, you know, she has overcome a lot of odds on being on national television, you know, obviously being a, a, a more heavier woman on national television. And, you know, people have come for her looks and have been very negative about her presence but we love Lonnie Love the only thing that I say to Megan is this try your best you're new in the game but it's only going to get worse um, and maybe the pain never ends but you've been blessed with so much the girl has what she's won three Grammys MTV movie or TV awards she's won 10 BT awards too much is given much is des deserved right and so in this case, sweetheart, you do kind of have to like take the good with the bad. You can't have all the likes, all the follows, and all the love all the time. The good comes with it. I like how you remix the saying, see who much is given, much is deserved. I'm gonna use that for <laughs> It's required. <laughs> Q, what you got to say about this? What you think? <laughs> Shut the hell up and suck it up. That, 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 that's my God honest advice. Shut up and suck it up. People in entertainment live more privileged lives than 90% of the people on the planet. It is par for the course. I've been doing this now 13, 14 years. I went through several big scandals where people have wrote very nasty things about me that almost sent me over a cliff. And then I had to realize, you know what? Why am I finna let a bitch in the middle of Montana that's sitting in the cubicle that don't know me say something to hurt my feelings. And I went in my big walk-in closet. I looked at all my Gucci and my Prada and my Dolce Gabbana. I looked at the fact that it was one o'clock in the afternoon and I was sending my boxes eating popcorn and old episodes of Jenny Jones while them hoes was at work, okay? <laughs> you live a very privileged life and it has a price, baby. You're gonna pay on the front end or the back end, but you're gonna pay. If you wanna be regular, and you want to be talked about like a regular bitch, go be a librarian. <clears throat> I hear you, but I also can relate. I, I can relate when it's stuff that kind of hits close to home, like it hurts, you know, like some stuff that you maybe already be insecure about, you know, like if you get no, and they talk about how you look like you get no, you're like, I know, bitch. You don't gotta <laughs> remind me, you know, like I, on one hand, I get you, I totally feel you, Q. We do live privileged lives. We literally work three hours a week. Like that's very lucky, but, I don't take off my human um, uh, hat, Emotion. you know, and I, I remember getting so beat down to a point that I was very depressed and things weren't as good as I had to make them seem like they were. Like I was actually broke at the time going through a break a horrible breakup and just, ugh. and I remember the things I read was like, it, that shit hurt my feelings, man. It made me not want to even do this shit no more, but you I feel know what like, I did, Claudia? I, you, for me personally, I cried about it until I couldn't cry no more. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Right. And then eventually you just get numb to it. I mean, the 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 the, the three go-to things for me was he broke, he always getting evicted, he on drugs. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like, and I just could not escape it. Even now, when people want to attack me with something, those are the three three things they go through. And, and I had a choice to make. These things happened eight, nine years ago. I could still be crying about it now or just that's just what they're going to say. And I just got to roll with it because I'm not going to give up my life yeah. for it. You know, it's rarely someone that's doing better than you is saying these things either, right? Exactly. Like I, I used to go to their page and take a screenshot of them and then do a side by side with like something to make them make myself feel better or whatever. And it's rarely someone that's doing better than you. But I will say this. Certain things are triggers for people, you know, like if you've been sexually abused and I've spoken about my issues and then being called a whore, that is something that I'm always going to get defensive about. And people know that's my Achilles tendon, my Achilles heel. So they're going to hit me with that every single time. And it works. It gets to me, you know, mm -hmm. you welcome trolls, go ahead, you know, and, and, and it's like, I get how it can affect your mental health. I, 
And it's hard to like look away, right? Like it's like a car accident. It's hard for us to like not look at the stuff that they say about us. I haven't mastered it yet, so I don't have good advice for anybody. I'm just saying I just get how it's still hard. I think my concern, my concern with Megan is she's such a huge star. Like once you're following, we're in a culture now where we will abandon you. We're gonna talk have a story tonight that we're gonna talk about abandonment, someone a huge star. Once you're a huge star, once we start thinking that you're whining when you should be rejoicing, your fans can turn against you. This industry will bring you down just as hard as they lift you up. So that's the only thing. And she's too good. We got too many more years to see this wonderful woman perform and sing and rap and change the change the narrative. So I don't want her to get canceled from her complaining about something that she's going to definitely have to learn how to manage. And we also got to keep in mind, she is in her early 20s. She's a very young girl, right? She's young. Right. We're 40s, 50s. How old you, Funky? You 40 yet? 39. 39. I'm not as old as y'all. I'm young and supple. <laughs> mm. oh, Funky, get out On of here. paper. <laughs> <laughs> that liver is way older than both of us put together. <laughs> exactly. <Young and> supple, <laughs> honey. <laughs> All right. Um, Speaking of supple and young looking, Khloe Kardashian <laughs> claims she suffered brain trauma due to Tristan Thompson's compulsive cheating. She said trauma stemmed from a car accident where she went headfirst out of a car windshield. But while looking at Khloe's brain scan, the doctor noticed signs of emotional brain trauma, which Khloe credits to Tristan Thompson's history of cheating on her. But people on social media are saying that Khloe did it to herself by constantly taking Tristan back. Funky, let's start with you. What are your thoughts on Chloe's claims, her brain scan? And do you think you have any emotional uh, damage on your brain? And who would you attribute it to? Who's fault? Well, well, listen, we definitely know something wrong with her damn brain because of the <laughs> amount of times that she took him back, right? Here is what I don't like. It's the Kardashian, we're done with you formula all over again. So now, they're, they, you know, they got this show that they are able to use, twist, and manipulate to create whatever narrative that they want. And Tristan, I'm here to tell you, Black man, you thought you was part of the clan. You are now about to be on the other end of the Kardashian train where they now railroad your ass and run your, run your uh, name into the ground because you cannot tell me there's a goddamn doctor alive with a degree from a reputable school that's around here talking about you went through some some mess with a man and now your brain all messed up. No, that whole brain was messed up in advance. That's why she went through what she went through with that man. But Tristan, I feel bad for you because they 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 about to set you on fire, brother. I think the brain's messed up because she's got them OJ Simpson jeans, allegedly. Yeah. And all that <laughs> that's not fair. That free floating silicone and going under going under all that anesthesia 50, 11 times. Then your brain probably messed up because you don't recognize yourself. Every two years, you look like a whole different person than the one you started with. That's why your brain messed up. And quiet as it's kept, that's probably why Tristan Nass was cheating, because hell. Every time you walked in the house, you was a different woman. So he could make you out the woman you was versus the woman at Starbucks. Yeah, he thought it was all Khloe Kardashian. So you right here want to blame it on him. Girl, go, get on out of here. I think her brain trauma is from her not loving herself. That's what that real brain trauma is. And it also comes from the fact that she has low self-esteem. There's nobody else in that family that has lower self-esteem than her. Her sisters don't have low self-esteem. Her mama don't have low self-esteem. And Lord knows we know uh, Caitlyn Jenner ain't got no low self-esteem to go from an Olympic winner to now being a whole full-blown woman. I you know, it's just interesting about this ugly girl. woman at that. <laughs> it's just interesting about this woman is that she has changed everything that she doesn't like about herself. And she does it what appears to be every six months. And she still can't find a way to make herself happy. And for her to dare blame her trauma on her ex, it's beyond ridiculous. Blame it on yourself, sweetheart. But this is my question. Do you all think that it was because she used to be heavy set and overweight and did television? Do you guys think that that may have had something to do with yeah. it? For oh, years, definitely. she was deemed the ugly sister, which was, you know, messed up because half the people saying it probably looked worse than her. She wasn't ugly, but relatively speaking to her sister, she was the bigger girl. You stand next to your skinny friend, you look fat as hell. You know right. what I mean? And you know what? It didn't even take it didn't even take other people saying it. I mean, you got two eyes and she knew that she looked 
different than her two sisters. We see it in Black families all the time. There can be three or four sisters, and the light-skinned sister gets treated better, or she's regarded, too, as more pretty, and it leaves the other sisters. She, by American traditional beauty standards, she was less attractive than her other two sisters, coupled with being overweight. Sure, that bothered her, and sure, that's still a part of her. Yeah. Mm. All right. Well, we're going to take a quick commercial break. Chloe, we wish you well, and we hope you heal. Your brain trauma heals from Tristan. And a good way to avoid it getting worse is to not take him back for the fifth time. You deserve better, girl. All right, y'all. Quick commercial break. We'll be back with more. And I would like to see what our brain trauma uh, scale is. I think that All would right, be very interesting. Not me, girl. Man. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back to TGIF. If you're feeling the show, give us some flames in the chat and uh, go ahead and get your questions in again. Even if you ask the question, go ahead and ask it again because a lot of times it gets bumped up and producers, if you can just grab some of the most provocative questions. Let's answer provocative questions tonight. Let tonight be provocative question night. I think we can have a little fun with that. Okay. Right, so you so you can backpedal on the pussy. Right. Right. No. <laughs> it's, it's only, for, it's only you one. You me and Al business and not tell none of yours. I got the provocative question everybody asking that you need to answer tonight. <laughs> I, it's KJ. He, he's <laughs> home. Oh, he is it's home. KJ. Oh, oh. KJ is at his house. It's 4,600 oh, oh. square foot home. He's home right now. That's what KJ is. It's we answering mm-hmm. questions. We answering questions, but I told you I want to talk about that relationship but i answer anything else <laughs> funky oh Ass- asshole it's about okay to get good it's about Let's, to get good yeah ask your questions i'm not prepared <laughs> ask your questions <laughs> all right y'all uh let's get into this weeks ago we talked about how kanye ended his partnership with the gap over alleged contract violations now he's reportedly in talks with black owned brands and claims he's only interested in collaborating with black owned Footwear companies, why do you think Ye is finally showing interest in Black-owned brands? Al, let's start with you. What do you think about this? Because he got kicked out of the white ones. No, let me stop. Um, I'm struggling with this. I really am struggling with this. As a brand strategist and also an African-American businessman who owns a business, these are the type of opportunities that you would like to be placed in your in your you know, your life on a regular to have some a mega superstar, billionaire, a lister to want to be associated with an African American brand. That is huge. And you would welcome it at any time, but you just don't get it as an African American business. Now the struggle for me is this. Now that you have been kicked out of the house, now you want to play games or not games. Now you want to do business only with an African American foot brand. Well, I guess you do. You don't really have many other options unless you go across the water and participate or partner with someone else. It's about time Kanye is embracing it, but it upsets me that the African-American community has to sometimes always be the second option when we should have been the first. I agree. I agree. Uh, Q, what do you think about this? Um, it scares me. It scares me for the company that's going to get involved with Kanye because it seems like the minute a shoelace is not the color that he likes or 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 um, a- agreed to, that he's going to get on the internet and blast them and unravel the deal, and it may end up causing the company more harm than good. Gap and Express and Adidas and all of them, they can handle Kanye West getting on the internet, blasting them. But Claudia's footwear may not be able to bounce back mm-hmm. if, if Kanye gets on there talking about it. And Claudia does bad business and she lied to me and da 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 da, da You right. might not be able to bounce back. So it, 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 it concerns me a little bit, coupled with I echo Al's sentiments about running to the Black community after you don't got kicked out the house. Mm-hmm. But isn't with this kind of man, well, I don't want to say this kind of man, but isn't this what a lot of men do? People do. Let me say people. Hey, let, I'm let, trying to say, what you talking about? Well, because I'm thinking of a couple examples of them, and OJ Simpson comes to mind. You know what I mean? Like right, right. when all okay. good and when everything was all good and, and lovely, and you were at the top of your career, you only want to deal with white women. You did white films, white projects. We never seen right. you come around the community. You didn't do shit for the community. And the same could be said about Kanye in the middle of his career. I think in the beginning uh-huh. he was down with us. I'm gonna be fair to him. I don't think he's always been like that. He reached a certain height, and it was all Louis Vuitton. It was this. It was that. It was teaching. It was all this white stuff to the point where you're hugging Donald Trump from the back. 
You you were the big you were the big spoon. Doc from the um, back, Claudia. From the back. <laughs> you hugged him from the like as Funky would say, how you say the bike? The bike? From the bike. The bike. <laughs> you hugged Donald Trump from the bike. From the bike. From the bike. From the bike. The bike. The bike. Okay. B-Y-K-E from the bike. <laughs> the bike. <laughs> so you went from the college dropout with the backpack where you was down with the community and you were down with the culture. You were the culture, Kanye, and that's why we're so disappointed. You go from that to saying George Bush does not care about Black people to you appearing to not care about Black people. And even now, as you want to come back to the Black brands, which I think is good, I guess. It's kind of like a day late and a dollar short, though. You could have helped so many Black companies if you'd have done this early on. Now, no one want to rock with you. It's kind of like it's like at the end of the night, you couldn't get the hot girl at the club, so you wait till the lights go down, uh, come up, and <laughs> some lonely girls at the bar looking a hot-ass mess, and you're like, oh, might yeah. as well. <laughs> right. That's what it's giving. It's giving might as well. Right. And, and, and and the audacity of making Black people your last choice. And, sorry, in closing, we have not seen you with a Black woman since you left, Kim. Alexis, That's the Blackest girl you've been with you, since... You mean Alexis, the Delta. Well, I was making a joke because she was the darkest thing he's been with since he left her. He's been all white women. I hate when I see these activists, These not that you can't be an activist and be pro-black with a white mate, because my mom is white. I'm one of the most pro-black people out there, but it ain't matching, bruh. You so blackity black, black, and you you run in the fashion we get with the skinniest, whitest model you can get with every single time. Where the black girls at, Kanye? Make a power couple with a sister. We'd love to see it. And Alexis was great for you, I think. She kept him sane and probably get, kept, gave him his medication on time. <laughs> you know, that's what they, they gonna do now. Mm-hmm. She cooked for him. She cooked collard greens and ham hocks and black eyed peas. And mm-hmm. she gave him his medication on time. She said his clothes. I see them white women. They don't know nothing about that. They don't know about cooking to keep, keep a house. And Julia Fox, I don't know where he dug, what grave he dug her up out of. <laughs> what what? <laughs> App he got her off. You right. know a black when a black man's with a white woman by how he dresses. Cause mm-hmm. a sister be like, uh-uh, you ain't going anywhere with me with those stupid ass boots on. Mm-hmm. Like a white woman, be like, yeah, baby. I think it looks hot. Mm-hmm. It looks hot. Like when they start wearing, like you could tell Tristan Thompson with the high booty and the pants all pulled all the way up high, Kanye with the boots. Like they all like they all have that little thing, right? It's a little mm-hmm. they let them just go too far. Mm-hmm. Okay, moving on. Sorry, I don't hate Kanye. I really don't. I just think he's annoying, but I think he's talented. And I want him to come back home. I want him to come back to when he had a backpack and when he wasn't running in the polls. All right, y'all. Lotto is under fire for her response to a little girl who interviewed her. Take a look at this clip. How would you describe your personal style? I think I'm authentic. I think I give a modern, sexually liberated woman. Okay, there was uh, some outrage from some people on social media. I think Hazel E, uh, um, uh, Funky Dineva's fave personality, favorite media personality, had an issue with this. Do you think Lotto's answer was age appropriate? Let's let I'm gonna start with you, Q. What you think? So, so, so let's be clear. Her, her, her comment was sexually liberated, and the, the last part of that was something you'll learn about when you get a little older. Mm-hmm. That was her full statement. Um. <clears throat> Lotto was a child herself, uh, and, I'm, and I'm not excusing it. I just don't think that she has enough worldly experience or maturity to realize that what she said was not right to a child. I think that Lotto was trying to be her Lotto rapper self. Y- y'all got to understand, this generation now, these kids are the Instagram, Facebook generation, they have no barometer of what's appropriate and what's not appropriate. They're not like us, you know what I'm saying? When we were coming up, I would have never used the word sexually anything in front of an adult, yet alone a doggone kid. So because they don't have that barometer, I'm gonna extend Lotto a little grace but it definitely was not appropriate. There was, she could have said, I'm sassy. She could have said, I'm modern, I'm smart, and I'm sassy. And it could have meant the same thing to a nine-year-old. Okay. Makes sense. 
Uh, Al, what do you think? Yeah, you know, I kind of agree. But listen, Lotto is not a Christian rapper. Shoot, her number one song is talking about, you know, the big D energy. So, I mean, what would we ex exactly expect them from her? I think one thing that Lotto could do, because I think Lotto is going to be around for a long time. She's that talented. I think she's just going to have to learn how to code switch, kind of like how Nicki Minaj did. Do you guys remember when she was on Ellen? And, um, well, Ellen had on her show Sophia. Uh, what's Sophia Grace, those two young um, UK rappers. And then she surprised the two U young UK white rappers, you know, that were very, very young, underage, with Nicki Minaj. And Nicki Minaj came out and started rapping with them. And what she did, you know, we know Nicki Minaj can get gut gutter just with the best of them, but she changed all the words to make it age appropriate. So I think Lotto just needs a little bit of help. And like you said, Claudia, she's young and she's going to learn. And because she's going to be around for a little while, Lotto, Lotto, you need to practice a little bit of code switching. We're not going to be mad at you. We're not going to think you're not authentic, authentic or anything. Code switching when it comes to, you know, age appropriate stuff is okay. Um, Personally, I think this is much ado about nothing. I think for the lyrics that Lotto says, saying sexually uh, uh, liberated, is not a tacky thing to say. It's not, she didn't say a girl that gets big D. She just said sexually liberated, something you'll learn about later. And I thought that was actually kind of classy considering the lyrics that she rapped. I'm gonna say this, who's letting a nine-year-old interview rappers that talk about big D? Yeah, that's, that's true. the question at hand. Of course, she's, her job is to be her personality and to represent her brand, right? Her brand is not that of Nicki Minaj. Her brand is new. They're, they're extra sexual. Like, we know that. And I like it. I'm also 49 years old. But, like, uh, why is a nine-year-old even there? Why is a nine-year-old interviewing rappers that talk about Big D? Yeah, but, you know, also her brand, her brand would not be on the other side of a simple mistake if she was just a little bit more savvy. So we wouldn't be having this conversation if she knew how to handle the situation. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I well, thought she thought she was being cute when she right. said something you'll learn about later. She thought she was being cute, but that that was more for like an auntie talking to a little right, nigga. right. You know what I'm saying? Not random white girl red carpet. Right. Okay. I thought I didn't think it was that bad, but okay. Um, let's get into this Dahmer series on Netflix. Did y'all watch the the series? I watch it all in one night. I'm, I'm in it right now. I'm on episode six. I'm on I'm on the Tony episode, the death episode that everybody's been talking about. I'm Which midway one? through that one. The death episode with the death guy Tony. Oh yeah, I, I haven't so made it to that one yet. Oh, episode yeah, six yeah. is called Silas. Baby Dahmer got it going on. Ryan Murphy did that, and Evan Peters is going to win all the awards. He right. really liked the deaf guy, too. Like, that's the one that almost made him... What, the, the no, y'all, wait, 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 you can't tell the story. The I'm deaf not saying that. Really, Hold on. The deaf guy really liked him. That was the part. He was looking for love so bad yeah. and found it on a two-way street and lost it on a lonely highway. Cut it out, Q. Y'all, stop. I don't... No, no, no. Stop talking about it. You can okay, well, story. Netflix is... Yes, Massa. Yeah, Netflix is... <laughs> <laughs> I the haven't gotten there yet. I haven't gotten there. No, it's it's really good. The, the whole series is amazing. So Netflix is getting a lot of backlash for tagging the show as LBGTQ. And members of the community allegedly spoke out and said that the Dama series is not the representation they are looking for. Netflix has since removed the tag. Do you think Netflix was wrong for tagging the LBGTQ plus community? Al, what do you think? Oh, no, no, no. Not, it's a, it's a, it was a simple content tag. So that I totally get. Um, so that's just kind of how it works. When you work in television, you have to put it in a genre and you have to put it a tag on it. And the whole content is about that journey, right? It was a, 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 a gay guy um, killing young gay black guys and young white guys, too. So I, I see why they put a tag on it. You know what was so interesting, though, and I, I'm only I haven't been through all the episodes as I, obviously. Right. But my my interesting thing here was how he got away with it and how he knew to live in a black community in a poor community. And he preyed on poor people and black people because he knew that the social ju I mean, justice and criminal system was always on the side of the white male. That is what's fascinating to me so far in Perfect. this Dahmer um, Purposely series. moved to a poor black community. To community, be, to yes. Be, because he, yeah, sorry. Uh, no, no. He, 
he knew, he knew, if you read the statistics now, a lot of the black young girls that are going missing are from poor communities. Therefore, you know, the, the criminal system, the justice system is like, okay, well, they're not important enough for us to find. So they don't use resources to find them. This set 17, Claudia, 17 victims. And, and that smell in that house. Like. In that house. And they found the skulls of the 17, not all of them, but they found the heads of the, some of them in the refrigerator. No, sir. And he was eating their meat twice. Uh, Q, what you think about this? I mean, I definitely think the tag was appropriate, okay? It is a, it, the, the, the gays, here go another example of y'all doing too damn much. It is an LGBT QIA themed movie. It doesn't mean, you know what I'm saying, that we deserve to be d d killed and and it's gruesome and all of that. And you know, if if you if you a lot of people were outraged, Ryan Murphy, in my opinion, did a very good job of showing the human side of these people that were killed and the vulnerability of these people that were killed. And let me tell you something. And Al, I don't know um, how many men you don't went home with in your life or how many you don't <laughs> brought home and let them play in between your legs and in your butt, but I'm just gonna talk about me. Oh okay. my God. Wow. I'm what what is going me. on here today? I'm what? just gonna talk about me. <laughs> in my younger years, okay, I have left the club and gone home with many a men. <laughs> many of them. Ain't know their name, <laughs> ain't know their phone number. In my twenties, I don't let many of them same men come <laughs> around my house. C met them on Adam for Adam. Y'all remember Adam for Adam <laughs> and BGC back in the day? Oh God, that's and all of a sudden, you got a knock at the door, <sighs> and it's just somebody. <laughs> And y'all don't even shit. At least he was offering them coffee and water. <laughs> we was walking straight to the bed, bed, bedroom and getting to it. And then they was leaving. And then you saw the MF again at the club two weeks later. He walked past you. Like, <laughs> you know, you didn't just give him the best loving of his life. I said all that to say. Wow. That's a that setup. That's how things go down oh in, in the gay community. You know, we hook up at the club and come home with people. <laughs> Or whatever. That's just and, and y'all be right here trying to act like that ain't an LGBT <laughs> film. Yes, it is. And anybody want on here, including Al, want to act all self righteous like they ain't never had no, <laughs> they had no club and then went home and hunched them and ain't oh, even know his last name or the last four digits of his phone number. Oh. They, they lying. They lying because baby, my twenties, I laid it low and spread it wide. <laughs> okay, child, I be on <laughs> your friend request. I be like, <laughs> did I hunt him before? You know it's bad when you can't remember if you hunt somebody. <laughs> I be like, oh, I think I, I think I might have hunched him. <laughs> you know, oh, God, I. Can't really do anything. <laughs> you said what you said. And at the end of the day, oh, I think we all agree that it's not, it should be tagged at because it is LBGTQ. It, uh, it, it has something to do with the community. We can't just only put the happy go lucky ones. We got to sometimes talk about hunching someone and not even getting the $50 that Jeffrey Dahmer was going to be. Well, thank you for your honesty, Q. <laughs> Very honest. We're going to take a quick commercial break on that one. Al's going to get his breathing together. And right. <laughs> Welcome back to TGIF. If you're just joining us, um, Q just made a confession on this show of how he used to get down back in the day. It's a very honest moment. If you just joined us now, I highly recommend rewinding it and watching and seeing how Funky admitted to laying it low and spreading it wide for a friend request. Good stuff. Thank you so much, Q. Now, if you too want to spread it wide and lay it low, but you're concerned about high gas prices, I got something for you. Inflation is high, y'all. You might not want to leave your house if you wanted to stay in the house, but guess what? I got something. Uh, you know, we cringe at the gas pump, and sometimes we get an eye-popping check at your favorite restaurant because inflation is hitting, and, you know, it's hitting us all where it hurts, and it really hurts. That's why I started using the Upside app. Now, it's an incredible app for anyone who buys gas, groceries, or dines out. Now, with every purchase, I'm earning cash back thanks to Upside. Um, I just got a notification of where I can find some gas. It tells me how cheap it is. And right down the street, it gives you an address. 
It tells you, it gives you direction to where the closest gas station is and where you can get that price. And I highly, highly recommend it. Now you might want to think about this. It may sound too good to be true, right? But uh, it is, I've used it and it really works and it's a no brainer. Um, you can save a lot of money with this and have money for other things like going on proper dates. Have y'all, any of y'all been able to use the Upside app yet? Oh, I have all the time. Y'all know I used to uh, drive my Honda Civic that filled up on $26. And now I got the BMW that fills up on like 71 or whatever. So when I be driving down the boulevard on my way to wherever it is I'm going, um, I love, I get the push notification that says this gas station, this price, whatever, whatever. And then whoo, I turn that bad boy in there and I collect my savings. So that is definitely one of the, the plus sides to using the upside app. <clears throat> And I know people don't think that they think we don't use it sometimes. I have one here. It says uh, it was four thirty eight, but I can get it for three sixty nine. So he's saving seventy cents or a, ga a gallon. That's a lot of money. Al, what was you gonna say? No, no, that, I was gonna say you know exactly what you were gonna say. Also, the alerts that you get that 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 in letting you know. I don't drive, so but I do do the grocery side of it. So it lets me know which participating grocers, grocery people participate. And hey, I like saving money now. That I'm into for sure. That's right. Now, in comparison to credit card rewards or loyalty programs, you can earn three times more cash back with Upside. Users are Upside users are earning more than a million dollars every week collectively. That's probably why they have a 4.8 star rating on the App Store. Now, if you want to get started, go ahead and download the free Upside app, like we all have, and use promo code TGIF to get five dollars or more cash back on your first purchase or $10 or more. Now that's $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more, correction, using promo code TGIF. Uh, listen, we use these things, we get them, we try them out. And uh, if you can save 70 cents per gallon or be told where they are, because a lot of times you just don't know where they are to even get the saving. Uh -huh. And this app makes it really easy and it's, it's catered to you, your neighborhood. So please check it out and please... Uh, Take our word for it. It's really good. All right, quick commercial break. We'll be back with more confessions and dirt and make sure you get your questions in the chat because we're going to come back at the end of the show with a bunch of questions we're going to answer. We'll be right back. <sighs> Welcome back to TGIF. Yo, I'm looking through the comment, the questions already in the chat. And I, um, like, I know we're going to wait to the end, but some of the questions, okay. Our love 144. Claudia, have you ever one nighted Al? He is bi. That don't mean we slept together. We ain't ever slept together. No, we've had fun together. Oh my goodness. Okay, we're going to get to your little shady ass questions at the end. All right, a French dentist has been arrested and tried for deliberately mutilating patients from low income neighborhoods. The dentist received an eight year sentence for his money making scheme, which targeted low income patients and forced them to undergo unnecessary procedures. Q, I know you had a lot of, you're very proud of your beautiful smile you got with, from Dr. Heavenly, which it looks really good. Go ahead, go ahead, show them thanks. <laughs> oh my God. He sure something in his water. Something in that boy's water. Yeah, what do you what do you think about this story? Well, I think anybody in America who want their teeth done, they should go to Smiles by Dr. Heavenly, number one. <laughs> no, but I think this is really messed up. But you know, the unfortunate thing is, Claudia and Al, this is a very common practice across all genres of medicine where people accept Medicaid, Social Security, or anything of that nature. I will never forget, my dad used to audit my grandmother's Social Security uh, uh, Medicaid printout slips or whatever, and he literally had to roll up in the doctor's office and get bucked with the doctor because although it wasn't coming out of his or her pocket, there were all of these procedures listed on her thing that was never performed on her that were unnecessary. So I want people to know that this is more widespread, this type of fraud, because everybody says, just like people who take Section 8, the check from the government is guaranteed. Now, I think it's messed up that he took advantage of lower income people, people who don't have the propensity to advocate for themselves. You know, oftentimes if you go to a doctor and the doctor tell you, you need a root canal on this tooth, that tooth, that tooth, Hell, my degree is an assistant manager at McDonald's, bitch. I don't know. I, I'm just going to go with it. If he say he got the four or five teeth, you're going to go with it. I just think it, it, it's sad that he took advantage of these poor underserved people to the magnitude in which he did. Agreed. Agreed. Al, what do you think about this? You know, I, I'm like I'm like you on this. The, the sad part is that it's always happened 
in those communities that are poor and they don't know any better and they can't advocate for themselves the way they should. But let me tell you something, everybody. If you live in Connecticut, California, Colorado, Alaska, Kentucky, Missouri, Pennsylvania, or Illinois, they are pulling your teeth out. Well, allegedly, there have been cases in those states where doctors are doing the exact same inappropriate medical procedures on patients in order to get that damn insurance money. And they're going straight to jail. So everybody, this is just happening in France where the story originates. This is also happening right here in the United States where people, dentists are doing inappropriate things with your teeth and your mouth to get paid. Claudia, what people do with your mouth to get paid? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. Sign a thing. I'm going to froze up. Oh, she done froze up. Uh, okay. What was it is unfortunate that, that they are doing that to people in France. And, you know, one lady was saying that her mouth smelled so bad that she had to uh, quit her job at the bakery because the smell was so bad what was going on. One other lady said that he had completely numbed out all of her nerves at her mouth that she was experiencing just 24 hour pain. It was just completely gruesome out. And I think that it, it, it was um, unfortunate, but moving along y'all Lil Boosie also has something to say. Oh, we're going to go to the baby. We can go to the baby. I'm glad we didn't have to go to Boosie. Right. The baby claims he's been blackballed after his latest project is reportedly on pace for selling less than 20,000 in his first weeks. But he seems pleased with his numbers. He posted, not bad for the black ball baby. Do you think he's just making excuses for his project not doing good in numbers? That you asking me that question? I'm asking you that. All right, see, I, this is what I feel about the baby. He's doing everything but taking accountability. Your low ticket sales and your low record sales 100% has nothing to do with you being blackball. It has 100% to do with your whack music. Okay, let's be very clear. People are talking about his music is all sounding the same. Now, we know three huge artists that have gone through some scandals and have said some really dumb things, but they have been able to rebound because their music is good. All right, let's look at them. Number one, Michael Jackson. He went through a whole scandal of what, 20 years, last 20 years of his life of being accused of being a pedophile, but his music overcame that because it was so good and it touched so many people's lives. Look at Chris Brown. He done smashed the head in of one of our favorite entertainers in the world, Miss Rihanna, but we still like him because of his music. And lastly, Kanye. Kanye could never put his foot in his mouth any worse than hugging up on Donald Trump and all his other antics, but we still support him because of his music. The baby, take accountability. Your music is not all that, and your fans are saying not only is the music not, it's not all that, but your antics can go in the toilet too. You know what it is? I think people outright just don't like him. I'm going to tell y'all the two nastiest people in the music industry is the baby and it's Kim Burrell, big ass. Okay? <laughs> Have y'all seen Kim Burrell on Tamara Hall? She just radiates nasty. Just old nasty fat cafeteria lunch lady. What you want, Junior? Type of, type of attitude. I can't stand her. Can't stand her. Can't stand <laughs> the damn baby. The baby... You have been blackballed, but not by the industry, by the fans who just see through your stuff. And <laughs> <tired>. <laughs> they just sick and tired of you. And speaking of sick and tired, Al, <laughs> you having this dog on showing the people don't get sick and tired of us. We better go to the <laughs> So y'all stay tuned. We're going to commercial break and we'll be right back with more TGIF after this. Welcome back to TGIF. My apologies for the technical issues here. Hey, uh, real quick, I want to talk about this Rachel Dolezal, the former NAACP branch president who pretended to be a black woman uh -huh. going viral uh, after the recent discovery of her OnlyFans. Have y'all seen the pictures and are y'all subscribing? Did y'all see this nonsense? I mean, mama was thick with it. I seen some of, listen, uh -huh. listen, listen, listen. We just came out of a two slash three year pandemic we just came out of monkeypox. 
Uh, rent is through the roof. You see, we got to sell upside because gas through the roof. Um, the price of coochie don't fail less than a box of lead quarters. I've been told y'all that. I am not mad with anybody who getting their money. We just talked about forgiveness, at, uh, Claudia, when you was gone. If Chris Brown could knock Rihanna upside the head and be forgiven, we could forgive this lady for being black and watch her soft porn. Okay, get your money, honey. Okay, so I just have one question. Cause what are leg quarters? See, Al ain't black for real. Al, Al, you you don't know what a leg quarter is. Chicken. What's a leg quarter? The bottom half. It's the thigh. It's the thigh part attached with the drum part. Oh, so it's chicken. Yes, but it's oh, I don't eat that part. It's the cheap box of chicken uh, that I don't you eat that go part. when you having a family reunion or a fish fry or something. It's the cheap, the cheapest box you can get because you barbecue it. Uh-uh, that's the that's the box song people. Can y'all please <laughs> give me some black co-hosts that know what the hell's going on in the black culture? Because this man really just <laughs> had high yellow ass on here and asked what a box of lab quarters is. I've never heard of that. Claudia, have you heard of that? Don't be honest, Claudia. I know what the quarters are. I never heard it said leg quarters. Leg quarters. I ain't never heard no leg quarters. I get you know, it. When you go somewhere like Pollo Tropical, you never said, like, let me get a quarter chicken with rice and beans. Never mind. I have at, at uh, uh, Boston Market. Yeah, you know, you like, let me get a quarter chicken with mash and gravy. Okay. Oh, y'all, Al, hey, Al black in... like this and not like this. <laughs> <laughs> this ain't in the rundown, but I just wanted to ask y'all, did y'all see the Taryn Hall, Kimberell interview? We talked I about did, it while you fell off. While you you just laid her completely out. <laughs> Damn it, yeah, I want to be there for that. that. All right. Um, hey, real quick, this last story before we get to the questions. Um, Y'all hear about that lady that the chihuahua pooped in her mouth? Who <laughs> <laughs> said I was having my afternoon nap with Belle, like I always do, when some suddenly something squirted in my mouth? Oh. Continued, it was disgusting, and I was hurling violently Ooh. after making the case out of my mouth. I, apparently, she was in the hospital for three, <laughs> three days. <laughs> mm. That was disgusting. I promise you, if a do if my dog did that to me in my mouth, we would be taking one friendly <laughs> little field trip. We would take a field trip to the kennel. I would place all the toys in a bag, all his little beds and stuff. He would be at a dog shelter, I swear. The way Claudia Cat always jumping up on her, I wouldn't be surprised if her cat don't boo-booed on her. <laughs> <laughs> If my cat boo booed on me, I have some white and red boots. <laughs> okay. We do not do that. No, um, but the lady was sick for three days. She had to get, be in the hospital on an IV drip. And it was runny, too. It went right down her throat. Down her throat. Ooh. Not okay. Either. Perfect time. Before we go, we want to show love to our fans in the chat and open up the floor for your questions and ask us anything. Let's go ahead and get to these questions real quick. Um, Wendy says, Q, what happened to your red lipstick? Um, I decided uh, years ago to transition kind of out of the wig character because Quentin Latham could get in more spaces than Funky Dineva can. So when people want the wig and the red lipstick, I have to make them pay just a little more, and we do that for special occasions. Okay. As Elite 21 says, Al, why do you say successful instead of successful and picture instead of picture? Well, you know, because I, I said what I said. <laughs> How about that? You know what I love what Al say? Woman. Woman. <laughs> <laughs> Another Al question. David Oliver says, does Al wear booty pads? No shade. No, he got a big booty. Sorry, I answered for you, but. I just want to know why I get all the ugly ass questions. Hello? No. Um, uh, Asha Jeremiah says, I have a question, Al. Please give me a policy topic to write about. Please, I'm in school, and I'm taking social welfare policy. Okay. <laughs> a policy topic? Anything in the inequities related to credit score. Okay. Well, that was good. Good advice. Stevie Ray says, Claudia, would you ever invite Nene Lee to a sit-down on cocktails with the Queens? I've said before, I feel no problem having a sit-down with her. We've actually had sit-downs. We sat together at, um at crustaceans and we took a picture together we talked at another event in atlanta and i think what happens with us is we squash it and then someone will say something or i'll see a like of a shady comment and i'll get mad i'll read her and then we're back at square one 
Uh, but I have no real issue with her. Like, I don't hate this lady. I really don't. And if she was willing to come on, we could definitely have a talk or a talk off camera. It don't hey, let's do it. I'm seeing her tomorrow night at Peter Thomas' birthday party with Jocelyn Hernandez and Nene. Let me see what, what type of magic what I can too? work. You know what else, too? Ask her to come here. Right. She, let's see if she'll come to tea. But catch this. I don't want her as a one-segment guest. I want her on to do the topics with us. Oh, she, that's a good ask, Q. All right, I got this. I got this. I, I think what would be good with me and her is a talk first off camera, so it's not a moment that gets made for the show, for the blogs, and it could get messy, and I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in, in a real resolve, not a fake one. You know what I mean? Like a real, we squash it, and then we do the show. That's then fair. more like it's real, you know? I, I'm totally to with that. that. That's I'm, fair to you. That, I, 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 yeah, I don't I hate that. I want a lady. moment, but go on. Right, exactly. I know you want a moment. I see it. <laughs> <laughs> now, now well, we got to rearrange our whole right. I, so, I, I, exactly, well, exactly. Because if I'm gonna have my moment, then we gonna bring Michelle Brown and Star Jones. Oh, oh hell no, 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 Bring no. them on. I say, come on. Bring that we on. not doing. <laughs> bring them all. Uh, let me try to get a real quick one. Um, uh, Sherry Walker, my question tonight is for Q. Do you go back and watch your old videos like I do? The Solange Elevator Fight reaction video was my all time favorite. You know what? People may not believe me. I don't watch myself at all. I don't even go back and watch old episodes of TGIF. I have not seen the Miss Pat show that I've been on. I don't watch myself at all. You know? Okay. Mm -mm. Uh, Stormy J. Blake, Claudia, do you have any desire to get married one day to a real man? I mean, of course absolutely. You and I, I'm hoping to be married within the next year. And on that note, did y'all have a good time? Y'all get time? We did. We had a fun show tonight. You always cracks me up. Y'all know that. Yes. He, he just keeps a tickle. He keeps me tickled all the and time. And you got a new shirt, Q. Okay, I see Fox. Girl, I had you. this shirt he on. He had that shirt on in New York City, baby. You did? Yes, yeah, we, we came to your party. I was busy. All right, y'all, stay tuned. Stick around for the house. <laughs>